الخليل ماجد الكلاني ماجد الكلاني ريبورت ويلكم اور جيست جيفري كليفتون براون ممبر اوف بارلمنت فور ذا كوتس وورلد اند اولسو يو ار ذا فايس بريزيدنت اوف ذا كونسرفاتيف يوروبيان جروب ذات ذا كوريكت نيم Well, I'm a member of the Conservative Party board. Mm. I'm treasurer of the 22, um, uh, and I do various other jobs, including being a member of the Public Accounts Committee. So I uh, do a lot of different jobs. And also the China uh, uh, group as well. In Conservative Friends of China. Yes, yeah, exactly. Conservative Friends of Friends China, which yes. is very, very good. But you are actually a veteran now, because you are f 15 years in the House of Commons. 25. 25. It to doesn't seem like it. Of course, yes. It doesn't yes, seem course, like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But it's 1992, uh, yes, yes, of course, yes. yes. So 25. Yeah. Well, you're, too, you're, you're still so young, uh, you know. Very I'm kind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the oldest actually member of the yeah. press gallery. Yeah. Uh, we've just been talking about uh, the vote on Wednesday uh, evening, and uh, we have seen uh, Uh, they don't actually like the rebels being called rebels, but uh, um, there's an Arabic saying that you actually do something right, but you meant is a wrong game. Are they trying to delay Brexit? Undoubtedly. These people, and our colleagues of mine, really what their ultimate agenda is, is to try and frustrate the whole process mm -hmm. so that we actually remain in the EU. And they are using every democratic means open them to them to do that, and that is their right as a member of parliament. It's just that the British people have voted in a referendum to leave the European Union, and therefore they are thwarting the rights, the democratic rights of the British people. And I think that they are making the whole issue much more difficult. There is a danger here. We have seen many votes, including voting Trump, uh, including uh, uh, various uh, events. Uh, the expenses scandal where people are s slowly um, beginning to distrust uh, members of parliament, distrust politician. Is actually a vote going against the will of the majority of the people? Is it going to help improve the politicians? Uh? Well, I think that the, 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 uh, the turnouts for both the referendum and the general election were very high. And in the general election, two thirds of those people mm -hmm. who voted voted for parties that wanted to leave yes. the European Union. So I think actually the rebels, so-called rebels, have to think about that very carefully. But I think we are going to leave. I think mm -hmm. this will not ultimately make any difference. It will make the process more difficult. It will mean the negotiating time is shorter because it will have to be compressed and then there'll have to be a vote in our parliament before it can be finally signed. But I think ultimately it won't make any difference. Uh, on Wednesday evening, actually, I spoke to Bill Cash and I spoke to uh, Rhys Mogg, and they say exactly the same as you said. But I'm a little bit worried because other people also say two things. One, it's going to weaken the Prime Minister's hand in Brussels talks, i.e. give the Brussels sort of more ammunition to dig their heels in. And secondly, Shukri Amuna uh, uh, from the Labour Party, who is actually a chief <laughs> Rimona, Uh, on an interview in today's program, uh, said he intended, uh, and even um, uh, another Conservative Party uh, member, uh, uh, Stephen Hammond, uh, uh, it, it said they actually next week, when the vote comes about delaying the day we leave the EU, they might actually vote again with the opposition. Well, there are two parts to that very important question. One, will it weaken the Prime Minister? I've always been a huge supporter of the Prime Minister. I think she's much tougher than many people give her credit for. And I think the fact that she got to this week, uh, the first stage of the negotiation, having made sufficient progress, despite all the criticism, a vast bit of the media against her, a vast bit of both the opposition and some of our own party, and she still managed to get there, I think shows how very tough she is. Now, clearly, this is a bit of a setback mm -hmm. yesterday. Uh, she's in Brussels today. I think she will make it clear to our partners in Brussels that the ultimate destination will be the same. And I don't think that her authority will be weakened. I think she'll still achieve a good negotiation with this country. As regards to Chaka Amuna, yeah. I am amazed that some <laughs> of my colleagues, like Stephen Hammond, who is a very good friend of mine, uh, you know, I've been in his house, he's been in my house, so he's a very good friend. I am amazed that they should fall for the Chaka Amuna uh, effort to try and defeat the government. I would have thought if you're a Conservative, you'd want to support a Conservative government Uh, not actually help the opposition in any way whatsoever. And I think this vote last night 
will have given the opposition uh, wind in their sails, as we say in this country, uh, and, and give them that thrust in their efforts to try and win the next election. Well, let's have a break and pray that we won't see the Marxist at number 10. Thank you. Thank you. And now back to the guests. Thank you very much, um, Jeffrey, for staying uh, with us. We just been talking about uh, two issues, really. One, before we go to the Grenfell Tower, is the President Trump visit. The <laughs> invitation has been issued. He has been to various European countries. You are the only country that hasn't come. And are you the people who wanted to ban uh, the visit or <laughs> reverse it? Absolutely not. He is leader of the free world. He is our, the, the United States are our biggest allies, are our biggest trading partner. I think it is actually essential mm -hmm. that our senior politicians, our senior officials do get together from time to time. And I think it's wholly appropriate that he should come here. That's not to say we don't have disagreements with him. We disagree with him over his tweet of the far right group. That is unacceptable. But that is the nature of a democracy. He's entitled to say what he wants. We're entitled to say what we want. But it doesn't mean to say that we can't be friends and we should uh, welcome him here into this country. Because with the American constitutional structure, it's unlike Britain, you know, with the head of the state, Her Majesty the Queen. He is a head of a state as well as a head of a government. And we are inviting the office, not the man. Exactly. And uh, people in the office come and go. There have been other times throughout our fairly recent history where we've disagreed with the President of the United States. Yes, For example, yes. when Lyndon Johnson came here and people were demonstrating on the Vietnam, Vietnam War. War yes. When George W. Bush came here and people were demonstrating about the war in Iraq. So we've had our disagreements, the people's. I, I, even I remember with actually Reagan, the same dinner with uh, Lady Thatcher, I was covering the story, and they abstained in the Security Council over the Falkland instead exactly. of voting with us. But we still, you know, I mean, Thatcher and Reagan... Had a famous relationship. And, and won the Cold War. <laughs> and won the Cold War, which was far more important so. than the Falklands. And so it is very important. There's some really deep, difficult issues going on in the world at the moment. One only has to name uh, the Ukraine, uh, North the Korea... Korea the Middle East, uh, North Middle East, Korea, yeah, uh, all Yemen, of that. We need all of those, which it's really it. important that Britain and And he's America our number one ally in the fight against terrorism. Absolutely. You know, was much... Uh, Pro as than Obama was, yes. once person at the end of the queue. <laughs> so we have far more that unites us yeah, than divides than us. Than divide us. And that is why it's important that we talk. Speaking of unity, uh, on Thursday there was actually the, uh, the, 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 the memorial service at St. Paul, attended by a whole established government, and Her Majesty was presented by Prince uh, Charles there. You are uh, a free man uh, of the city of London. Can you explain to our viewers what does it mean? <laughs> the it, well, it, what it means is that I... Um, uh, you, have, you have to go through a ceremony to become mm. a freeman of the City of London. It's a very ancient, honorary mm. title, mm. Um, but you have to be a freeman in order Going to the 11th century. <laughs> Back to the 11th century. <laughs> the reason I became mm. a freeman is that I am a member of a livery company. Mm. I am a member of the worship company of farmers, which actually does, a, each livery com company does a lot of good, uh, promoting the industry, uh, education for its younger members, and that is why I became a member. And at the heart of the city, of course, St. Paul's Cathedral, built by Sir Christopher uh, Wren. And uh, it's, again, a symbol of unity. We have seen the people who actually died in the Grenfell Tower of various faiths, Muslim, Coptic Church, uh, other churches were actually presented there. Is that the, sp the spirit of the city, of London? Absolutely. I, fairly soon after the Grenfell Tower, went there. I spent about two hours there just talking to people of all nationalities, all faiths, all beliefs, all united in their grief for the people who were lost in that terrible accident. And of course the city has always been welcoming to all nationalities and uh, that is the heart of this country basically. We've always been a welcoming company, and right from the very early sort of Huguenots mm -hmm. uh, through a whole range of Second World War. Uh, with, with all sorts of nationalities. In, in the previous uh, programme, we actually talked about how the city and how even the Lord Mayor of London goes back to the, uh, 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 I think, 1137. So the city has actually been the, <laughs> uh, the actual shop front of Britain for the whole world. It was great. 
Well, I mean, part of mm. Mandic Tata, the first parliament, was about trade. Yeah. You know, uh, people in this country were always outward looking and therefore they were always welcoming to people from other parts of the world. Uh, and, and actually, finally, before we go away, uh, just uh, for Christmas, the charity uh, <laughs> jumper is, is one jumper with, I don't know, I'm going to repeat, repeat that one. Okay. Actually, before we, uh, before we go, uh, the, 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 the Prime Minister posed with uh, um, Boris in a jumper. He's got two heads and only just two arms, so there's two bodies. I think it's a great... With one head. Uh, it's a great coming together at the time of Christmas. Yes, sorry. I want me to repeat it again. Oh, just cue me then, OK. Because I lost you for one second. And before we say goodbye to you and Merry Christmas, uh, the, um, there was a charity <laughs> for children where the jumper here saying uh, a, a Merry Christmas is you've got one body and two heads. Does it actually present the current government? Someone is really a hard Brexiteer going one direction, one the other? Well, I think we covered it earlier, didn't we? Mm. I, I think that for all their differences, and we're, 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 mm -hmm. Boris and Theresa May, the Prime Minister, it shows that they are united. And surely Christmas is the yeah. time when well, we, we should all, all be united, particularly in the cause of helping children. And uh, I'm looking forward to Christmas. Uh, and I hope we all, around the world, everybody has as happy a possible Christmas as they can. I uh, wish them all a happy Christmas. I wonder how Boris actually can go on his bike with a jumper like this. Who is going to take oh, I think they might have a pair of scissors <laughs> to part them, don't you? <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Which one of them would fall? Well... Uh, they, they both stand up on their, own, <laughs> on their own two feet. <laughs> well, well, I was actually um, speaking to a diplomat in Iran, and they said, despite all the fears, on the cultural and social level in Tehran, they just loved Boris when he was there last week, which again is all the expectation. But if you talk to him, nobody can fail to like Absolutely, Boris. Absolutely, yes. And yeah. he's doing exactly the right thing, because mm. for decades we had a really good relationship with Iran, and it is about time that we, we tried to improve it again. So uh, Boris, perhaps, will be... Well, you used to have an ambassador of goodwill. I wonder if Boris can be the ambassador of good fun. He's always good fun. <laughs> but you if he's good fun yeah. because you never know what he's going to say, you never know what he's going to do. Very good. Well, we thank you very, very much. Uh, and great uh, very Merry Christmas and Happy New and Year to you, too. Jeffrey. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all what we have. See you next week. Have a good day. We'll see you next week.